I'm Massimo Bottura and I'm, uh, I'm a chef, an uh, Italian chef. I live in Modena and uh, 21 years ago I opened a small restaurant. A small restaurant with big dreams. Uh, small dreams, a lot of dreams. Most of the time impossible dreams. But. Uh, I never been, uh, you know, I never dream uh, to open a, a soup kitchen uh, in Lapa in Rio de Janeiro, you know. This is Lapa, a neighbor is in Rio, very famous for samba, for, you know, to be the place where you can buy crack, drugs, where people, they sell themselves, it's very important, it's very known for, you know, parties, but also you can see and you can breathe poverty, you can uh, violence. And uh, one day, you know, in December, after the experience in Milan, uh, the mayor of Rio de Janeiro sent me a message <coughs> after, uh, with, uh, um, especially after the, the talk I had with uh, David Earth, the, um, the the mind behind Gastromotiva in Brazil, saying, Massimo, I'm your big fan, and I want a refettorio in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, immediately, like 10 minutes after I received the message, we were in bed, it was uh, 6.45 in the morning, I said, let's do it. And Lara looked at me and said, what are you talking about? Let's do a refettorio in Rio de Janeiro. We can make it. So, it was an empty love. It was uh, something like this, in between uh, two big buildings. And, uh, you know, you, what you don't see uh, in this picture is that there is a plaza, a small plaza there on the left, where, you know, with broken playground, people are working, people are selling whatever they have, and, uh, you know, homeless, drugs, garbage everywhere. And this is uh, how we found the loft, when uh, the loft, the space, when, uh, when we opened the, the, the gate. So, uh, what am I doing here? You know, I said, when I arrived, I was like, wow, this is really big. And I was looking at all these pictures that uh, David Earth was sending to me. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, I was in Modena. I was thinking about my restaurant, and I didn't know what to expect. And, uh, and I said, OK, it's going to open in, uh, in uh, August. If we can make it, it's going to open in August. I'm going to take the vacation. I confront Lara. I confront the kids, and I said, I'm going to take the vacation, and uh, you know, we're going to go and uh, spend the vacation in Rio and open a refettorio. So I start talking with all my friends, you know. Uh, you know, the people, they, they support me during the uh, refettorio in Milan. And they all said, of course we're going to be with you. It's, it, Milan has been incredible. So we're going to, to do it together. And, uh, you know, okay, this guys, is, this is the situation. How we are here making a rest when I arrive you know, in the morning. And uh, is what I found they there. They are playing golf, <laughs> they are yeah. resting. This is not, and here's the travel. Do you have to say hi. something? Hi, guys. Yes, we have still five days, so we, we are good enough. We are good enough. <laughs> okay, I trust you. You should. Now, you laugh. <laughs> now, 
No, no, you laugh because uh, you don't understand. <laughs> because this is, this is the reality. <laughs> you know, when I, when, when, uh, when I said yes to this conference, I, I, I thought, okay, why I don't want to go there and start the, all, the, uh, always talking about my, okay, my intellectual approach to food and stuff like that. that uh, I, I don't want to do that. I just want to, you know, I just want to say that, you know, it's time to act. It's time to stop talking. You know, what am I doing here? I'm like, this is, what, what, this is the approach of a contemporary chef. This is uh, what I, th when I say, Culture is the most important ingredient of the future. Is because culture, or uh, knowledge, consciousness, sense of responsibility. This is the the contemporary chef as this. You know, once you receive everything in life, it's time to give back. And uh, you know, but I didn't expect this, because in 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 Modena, everything has to be perfect. Everything has to be set. Everything you know. Uh, each one of our guys knows exactly what to do every morning, every single moment, you know? You arrive in Rio de Janeiro, and you are the one who really pushed this. And, uh, you know, I, was, I don't know what I had in mind, but I, I was expecting that, you know, a great Gustavo, a great architect from, uh, from uh, Sao Paulo, not from Rio, because you know the difference between Sao Paulo and Rio. Sao Paulo are our worker, Rio de Janeiro are worker. So, <laughs> Sao Paulo, they, wor they work in a different, uh, they have a different, uh, you know, approach. Rio de Janeiro are enjoying and beach, you know? <laughs> so, 10 minutes of, or 10 hours or 10 days is the same thing for them. So, <laughs> yeah, but <sighs> it's, it's difficult to explain, but it is like that. So, when, so you see, you see the situation, this is five days before. The, three days before, the president, the prime minister of Italy came with a, with a delegation and thing, and the, the situation was a little bit better, but like, the, like that. And they looked at me and they said, but do you think you're gonna open? I said, I don't know, ask Gustavo. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you know, it's like, it's, you know, it's, Gustavo, Gustavo is an architect from, uh, from uh, Sao Paulo, and he came and he slept 50 days in that place because he was so into this project. He left the company to come there, and he said, he called and he said, I want to stay here and I need to stay here because otherwise this project, it won't open. So Gustavo put 100 people, 70 people they were working during the day, 30 people during the night to be able to open. So, but when we arrived there, and uh, there was uh, no water, no electricity, no gas. So how can we open a soup kitchen like that? You know, it was really an impossible approach. The volunteers, they were there all day peeling things, peeling bananas. And I was like, what are you doing? Why are you peeling bananas? There are no refrigerators. There is no electricity. What's the matter? Ah, we have to do something. We have to do something. So, you know, it's like, all right, all right. I didn't know what to do. I was so, you know, uh, frustrated, and uh, I I call Lara as usual. No, when I need some some uh, some uh, vision to uh, and help, I call Lara, and I said, "What I'm supposed to do? I'm here. We're not gonna open. It's impossible." And Lara said, "Ah, breathe, and uh, you know, try to." understand what's going on and uh, just get the best and uh, we're coming, you know? And, uh, and uh, you know, Lara said, okay, uh, I have the phone call from JR. 
JR is one of the artists involved uh, for, uh, for this project. You know, the project is like, it's a, a cultural project, it's not a charity project. So I, uh, for me, as, uh, as Massimo, you know, one of my passion are the old design, art, music. So uh, I involve artists because I, I really believe in this refectorio is like this soup kitchen, art uh, uh, and uh, design. It's very important because it has to be a beautiful space because it's not about feeding people. You can feed people in any soup kitchen, but rebuild the dignity is something different. So and maybe you, you read some articles about these, these guys saying, oh my God, they treat us like king and princess. Uh, it's the first time they treat us like human being. This is what, what is the refectorio. It's like treat the people like human being, you know? So I called her and she said, and she said, uh, you know, why don't we go with JR up on the, la, on the favelas of Providencia having lunch there? You know, is, is the, the day of the opening. Why you want to go there? I said, JR wants us to be there. Because uh, if you don't understand Providencia, you can't understand Rio de Janeiro. So as usual, she convinced me. And, uh, I said, and she said, OK, let's meet at 10 o'clock in uh, you know, Central do Brasil, at the, train, at the station in Central do Brasil. And, uh, and we go up on uh, Casa Mareia. You know, this is JR and, and, uh, and Taco. And uh, Takao is a, is, a, is a guy who lives up on Casa Amareya, this, uh, on the point, on the top of these uh, la, uh, favelas, building a bulletproof room. You know, it's a moon on the top of the favela, bulletproof, to build, you know, you think the dream of an artist, to build the safety place in Providencia, a bulletproof room uh, as a shape of a moon to see on the top of the favelas. You know, it's amazing. The point is that these guys are 14 years old and, uh, you know, to have fun, to shoot some gringo, they shoot the, the moon like this every day for fun. And, and Takao is so into this uh, project that he said, who cares? I'm in a bulletproof room. And so, but the day after day, you know, day after day, he got so stressed out that he has to be, he has to be put in a, in a in, to recover in a hospital for a nervous breakdown, you know. <laughs> no, 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 is, no, you know, I'm, me too. I'm, I'm like, I, 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 try, I try to laugh, but it is true, it is true. And art is like this. Art is always like that. You think it's crazy, but after, you know, if you, if you look at the picture in a very large scale, you see the things very, in a different way, different perspective. I always say I'm gonna always leave a door open for the unexpected to see what's going on in my life. And when I, and art is the, the things that makes, make me see things in a different direction. So, what, what, uh, what, what happened up there, this was 12, uh, is, uh, it was uh, 12, and there was Amelia, like a chef, who organized, she's an old lady, who organized a lunch up there for us. It, you don't have an idea how we arrive up there. You know, we, have, we had to take the train, you know, uh, to go up there and arrive at the top but the train was stopped because too many bullets flying around. So they stopped the train and we have to walk up there. And they said, why you have to walk? Because JR said, oh, don't worry. Everything is under control. Come with me. I'm, I know everyone here. Actually, we arrived on one point on the stair, on the last stair, in which we found this guy, 13 years old, uh, <coughs> sitting in the middle of the street after a checkpoint, a military checkpoint, Three, three streets under, that they were like, where are you going? We're going up there on the roof to have lunch. And 
they were like, are you crazy? No, no, JR is, is, uh, is taking up, up there. He's, he's easy, he's fine, he's, everything is fine. And you know, this guy, he was sitting uh, like a lifeguard, no? On a chair up here as a lifeguard with a, a cover, with a, a Kalashnikov under there. And uh, as soon as we arrive close to him, three kids, they move around us uh, with the guns here, but they were like 13 years old. You know, and they said, where are you going? Hi, JR. And these guys are, no, these are not gringos, the Americans. These are not gringos, these are Italian. They're here to cook and to do something for us. Well, let's see what's going on. And they, and they came with us up there to, 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 to see what we were doing, you know? And uh, we arrived, and uh, we had an amazing, amazing time with all these guys all together, eating and, uh, and uh, you know, having fun. And, uh, and uh, she, and I, I, I realized in that moment, you know, that this was her word, you know. She could come up here and cook for us because she wants to do it, because she was very happy to do it. And uh, the guns, uh, the gangs, uh, the, the bullet didn't stop her. She wants to do it and she did it, and she cooked for us. So after that lunch, everything changed for me because I, was, I couldn't even sleep in the night how stressed I was. And uh, after that, I realized that no more excuses. The, the big neon on the top of the Milan soup kitchen got a different perspective, a different meaning, you know? And uh, yeah, the refettorio st was still without electricity, without water, without gas, but uh, what really changed in that moment was uh, our spirit inside us. And maybe because I survived from a favela, maybe because I saw these kids, uh, um, that they could take our life because we were gringos, but maybe because I finally understood the, that there was no more excuses. I was there. I fight for that. I use my image to raise money to open this, and I need to do it, you know? So this is uh, the, the soup kitchen in Milan, you know? Some of you have been there, and, I, I, and, uh, and uh, so what, what was an amazing place. Is, uh, it was an old theater abandoned with dust and rats and things that after six months of restoration became the most beautiful place in Milan, you know? And uh, to feed uh, the needy, the homeless, the work, the refugees, to create community, to show the chef, to show that the chefs are much more than the sum of their recipes, you know? And uh, to me, no more excuses. This moment was risk everything, you know? Taking wasn't good enough, being nice with, you know, it was, the only thing we could do is uh, act. And uh, because uh, food right now is a call to act. When I say culture, knowledge, consciousness, sense of responsibility. From in Osteria, we create culture. Osteria is a laboratory of ideas. But sense of responsibility is something, is a reflection after what we do every day, you know? And food right now is, uh, and cooking is a call, is an act of love, but also is a call to act. So, it was three o'clock when we arrived and we back from there. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, I found these people exactly as the day before, peeling bananas. But I saw the things with different eyes. I had different eyes. And I said, okay guys, 
8 o'clock, but the good news was, was this. There was water. Why? Because they, break, they broke into the building on the side. <laughs> they connect with, they intercept the, some, 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 something, and they break, and they get the water from the building. You know, we didn't have water, but now we have water. The electricity was there. Why? They, they got a generator. So it was like extremely loud noise, smelling, but there was electricity. The oven was exploded, but it's OK. <laughs> we put another oven. But they forget to take off the, the instruction. So it went on fire. <laughs> All right. There was no gas. So how can we cook? The simple things to do is like pasta. And, uh, but there is no gas. OK, no problem. We're going to run and get some gas. And they came back with some burners from camping, something you know, to put in some gas. And we couldn't make it. So what we, what we should do? I'm Italian. So Italians, the best thing of Italian is they can manage the rational and the, all the things that, you know. And uh, in my mind, I had this image of this Brazilian cooking banana peels and transform the banana peels into chutney. And in my mind, I don't know why, I, because maybe because I saw some hacks, I said, why don't we make a carbonara? Pasta carbonara is like, is a, like cacio e pepe or matriciana, is the perfect meal that the people from Amatrice, from, uh, from, uh, from center of Italy, they were g going to Rome, they had one meal every day, they had just the opportunity to have one meal, so they were eating big portion of pasta full of eggs or bacon or meat or, and, and you know, and it's enough for one day. So in my mind, I, was, I had that, and then maybe because I saw some eggs, you know? So I said, okay, let's make carbonara and see what's going on. But when I check if there was some meat, there was a piece of bacon like this. And I said, you know, there are 100 people. What am I gonna do, carbonara with a piece of bacon like this? So I put together everything. My culture, my knowledge, my memories, and we made carbonara through banana, transforming banana peels into bacon. And uh, you know, we, I sliced the bacon, and I put the bacon on the top of, the, of some uh, uh, things like that, and uh, we, or they were already all these banana peels. We boiled them as uh, they were doing in, in Milan, and uh, we, we toasted them, we make them crunchy, we smoke them in the middle of Lapa on the street. The people, they were passing through and look at us and say, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> you, know, you know, there's guys like that. And we just, in my mind and in my mental palate, I had to transform banana peels into bacon, you know, because it's the only way to, to make, to, tr to recreate this, uh, this idea of a carbonara in the middle of Lapa with nothing, and, uh, but you know, to serve uh, some meal in this condition, you know? No, it's, the point is, you laugh right this, and I'm, I, can, I can, you know, tell you all these stories right now, but at the moment, you, you, can you imagine how stressed I was? It's, it's, it was unbelievable. So, <clears throat> so, at one point, we were there, trying the carbonara. I didn't say anything to anyone, no to Alexandra Forbes, David Ders, and I said, okay, guys, let's try. Tell me what you think. They didn't realize when they were tasting, and Alexandra is an amazing food critic, and David is, a, is a, the, the, as I introduce you, they didn't realize that the banana peels 
the, the, the bacon was the banana peels. So I said, this is the work of a, of a chef. Make visible the invisible, you know? And we transform and we serve the, the pasta carbonara that night uh, with, uh, with uh, you know, and people they were eating and happy and, you know, and that's, that's the, the, the atmosphere, you know, of the people. You know, this is, that, this is five days later when, when people they were in after what happened, you know, after the video you saw. This is the situation, look at that. An amazing, amazing loft all around with uh, art everywhere. People having fun, sitting on uh, stools and tables made uh, designed by the Campana brother. Up there, there's uh, an installation of JR. In the back there, there's a, a, a little stage for people to talk and to, uh, um, and that because, uh, and, and sit and watch because that was, uh, uh, is gonna be a cooking school for, for women, for children, from kids. They want to learn and help, help them out of poverty, you know. It's, uh, something, it's something amazing. It's something that, you know, give me goosebumps just now to see all these slides. And, uh, and uh, you know, here is another small video of one minute to show the place one second before the opening. Look at, at the people in line outside. I was uh, involving all the people on the street, you know. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? You know, these are our guests. These guys are like the trans. They were, you know, selling themselves on the street. But they were there, and they want to be there. And this is, uh, we were all ready. These guys are all volunteers from the favela, you know. They, they sign up to be with Gastromotiva. These are all volunteers. They came and, uh, and uh, they have been part of the project. <coughs> and this is, was after the, the service. After the service, we were so stressed, so incredibly uh, emotion. Maybe was the, the most difficult thing I ever did in my life. And uh, we were swimming like, uh, we went out and we were swimming like kids, uh, laughing and feeling great. We felt light, happy. We knew that the real job was just begun. There would be a lot more work to do, but uh, we knew that no one, uh, no one of us would ever be the same, you know, after this experience. What, what can I tell you about the experience? This is what happened, you know. At one point, uh, it was uh, 2.30 in the afternoon that day after the experience up there. And uh, Gustavo met us at Central do Brasil, M uh, my daughter too. And uh, we decided to go and uh, take a walk on the Copacabana just to relax one, one hour before. And uh, we walk into this door in which there was a tattoo place because uh, Christina, she said, okay, I'm here. There's a hairdresser and uh, I wanna fix my hair before the opening. And uh, there was also a tattoo things. I was so completely out of mind that I said, okay, or I'm gonna kill these people or I'm gonna change my mind. And uh, in that moment, I saw, I, I had this feeling of Milan and, uh, to, and see, and I saw uh, Don Giuliano uh, that was telling me the first time I met him, instead of showing me the place, he showed me the train station. 
and the train that were moving uh, there. And I said, Massimo, look at this. It's amazing. It's a beautiful place. There are the train back there. So it's the future. The train is the meaning of the future. This guy was so crazy that I said, this is the right guy to do a project like this. <laughs> and you know, it's like I said, and th this was the, the moment in which I say, OK, Massimo, there are no more excuses. And the, the meaning of the neon was exactly that. No more excuses. Not, we, are, we, we can do it. We can make it. Less tattoos. And, and I got a tattoo that moment. And my daughter, I want a tattoo too. <laughs> and, and Alexa got a tattoo too. <laughs> so, so, it's a, there are no more excuses if, if we are in this room. We are too lucky, too talented, too aware to turn our heads uh, and look on the other way. You know, there is anger, there is waste out there. Human condition is fragile. There is uh, food enough for everyone because numbers are numbers. 860 million people are starving, 1.4 overweight, 1.3 billion tons of food is wasted every year. So 33% of the production. There is energy out there. There is money to do this. And there are amazing people who can help. So go out there. Be bold. Be brave. Be daring. Make mistakes. Take chances. And, show, and you have just to show you really care. You really care doing something. And I'm still standing. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're free. I'm, not, I'm emotional. <laughs> I'm emotional. I, you know, I, I feel uh, really, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, um, you know, it was like three, four years ago, we were at Mad Food Camp, and, uh, you know, we had the meeting with uh, Rene, Alex, um, Dave Chang, and, you know, we were like, and Lara was there, and uh, we were saying, uh, you know, we are moving from one conference to another, doing things. And yeah, it's, it's important, but there is, uh, we have to go on another level. Mm. We have to take another step. And you know, I said, we have to really act and not just talking. And uh, you know, everything happened like that. You know, my mom was in this crazy moment uh, of her life. And uh, uh, Universal Exposition was, uh, was there. And, uh, we have to show something. We have to give. Uh, they, they asked me to be involved in this uh, project, uh, all these projects that were just a big supermarket uh, idea of the Universal Exposition. So th it wasn't the right answer to the theme uh, Feed the Planet. No. You know, feed the Planet is, first of all, fight the waste. Mm -hmm. So that's how everything uh, starts, you know? No, it's, it's good, it's good. And I think it's, uh, it's uh, do first, talk after. <laughs> <laughs> do first, no, yeah, it's like, but maybe you can talk because uh, it's extremely important to transfer yeah, right. ideas, uh, culture, mm. uh, you know, vision. Because, uh, you know, if the kids, they see my example, you know, like, and the title is very important because uh, at this point, uh, you know, once uh, you receive, uh, like, the best restaurant in the world, and uh, you know the title is the best restaurant of the world is opening in a soup kitchen in a, in a Rio de Janeiro. It's a big title, very strong. So I, I just do like move the spotlight from me to the, to, to other things, you know, that can be my team, uh, the terroir where I live, Modena, but also uh, also much deeper and use uh, and use uh, uh, my 
my my spotlight for mm. for to show that there there is much more than no, I think than just the, you know the things. That's you know. cool. So you have to go and relax now. <laughs> <I'm relaxing. laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you.